Hi, I'm the Scrub and you're here for one reason. What do you mean the fabled city of Mark is nearby? I mean Mordona, nothing is nearby. Okay, you know what? Here's a map, show me on the map where it is. There? All right, I'm gonna fly up to the top of this bell tower and I'm gonna peek through these binoculars and if I don't see a city over there, I am going to kick your up. When the f did that get there? Time to learn about the weeping city of Mark. Simplified. Head forward and three alligators will jump out of the lake on the left. Kill those and three more will jump out of the lake on the right. Kill those three and the barrier will drop. As you approach the scorpion and two spiders, two more groups of the same three enemies will spawn on the left and right sides of the original group. Watch out for the green AOEs left behind by the spiders as you kill them. These will give you a stacking debuff of digesting, which is not only a dock tick, but it also increases your damage taken. After everything has been defeated, the web barrier will drop and it's first boss time. Dark Spike is a tank buster. Silken Spray is a large kernel AOE coming from behind the boss. If you get hit by this, it will give you an assumable heavy debuff and a knockback. If you get this red marker above your head, you'll be targeted with a medium-sized AOE that will put a sticky web at your feet. These webs don't really matter for this phase, but make sure that you stay out of them so you don't get the digesting debuff. After this, the boss will borrow underground and create an expanding AOE from the center of the arena. First, in a medium-sized AOE, which progresses into larger donut AOEs. These AOEs are easy to avoid. Just move into the AOE as the earth spurts out from the ground, and you should easily avoid the attack. If you get hit by this, it will toss you into the air and give you a Von stack. Right as the last donut AOE is about to go off, one random party member will get a proximity marker at their feet. Move away from this marker to reduce the overall damage to you. If you are close enough to the marker when the boss bursts out from the ground, it can one-shot you. Three random alliance members will get this swirling slime mob above their head with a large AoE around them. Everyone will need to spread out and get away from these targeted players, as if you're caught in the slime circle, you'll be tethered to the closest players and be inflicted with seized, which means you'll be unable to move or perform actions. Other players will need to run through these tethers to free those who are seized. The boss will begin to repeat mechanics. Once you get it below 80% health, the boss will throw all players into the air and create a web above the arena. If you stand in the areas between the web, you'll be inflicted with a debuff of digestive fluid, which is a dot tick and a heavy debuff at the same time. The boss will cast implosion, which is a big room-wide AoE. There will be these small untargetable blue orbs that will start gravitating towards the boss. If they reach the boss, it will gain a damage up stack. To prevent this from happening, just run into them to pop them in a small AoE. There will also be these large targetable purple orbs called Deep Earth Ether. They don't have a lot of health and can be destroyed quickly. There will also be spinning spiders that will spawn in at random points on the web. When these spiders die, it will create a hole in the web which you can use to drop back down to the original opening area. In this area, there will be three pillars called Key Knots which are holding up the web. There is also a scorpion who is just annoying. While you're underneath, you can be targeted with these yellow gears and a tether. The tether will hit you in a small AoE and bring yourself and everyone else in that small AoE back up to the web level. So if you get this icon, just move away from everyone else. When all three keynotes have been destroyed, the boss and everyone else will fall back down into the arena and the fight will continue. The boss will also now cast Shadow Burst, which is just a stack marker, so group up to share the damage, and Fronda Feed, which is a staring contest. Look away from the boss or you'll be hit with Hysteria, which will cause you to lose control of your character and run around aimlessly for several seconds. For this phase, if you get the red marker over your head, move towards the outer wall of the arena to drop the circular web away from the center of the arena. We do this because the boss will borrow underneath again and create a vortex that will pull players towards the center of the arena, which will now act like a proximity marker. The closer you are to the center, the more damage you will take. You will have to stand in one of the circular webs to avoid being sucked into the center of the arena. If you're sucked into the middle or standing in a web that is too close to the middle, it can easily one-shot you. The boss will repeat mechanics until it has been defeated. Head along the bridge and you'll be transported to the next area. Jump down both cliff faces to the left of where you land and you'll come across three boots. Once they have been defeated, six black mage corpses and a ghost will spawn in. Be aware the corpses will auto-attack with distance attacks. Kill everything and magic will dispel the barrier. At the end of the next bridge, six boots will appear. Kill those enemies and three more ghosts will spawn in. Kill those and magic will break the wall to create an opening. Make your way through the opening, through the ruins and up the staircase to the next area. Second boss time. The boss will resurrect the four zombies around the arena. Move away from these zombies as they will have an almost instant cast of a medium sized point blank AOE around each of them. If you get hit by one of these, you will receive the debuff of gradual zombification. If you get hit by two of these, you will receive the debuff of zombification, which will cause you to lose control of your character and attack your fellow party members for 10 seconds. These zombification debuffs will be very relevant later. After the zombies are resurrected, you will need to kill them quickly. If the zombies are left alive for too long, they can explode and cause major raid-wide damage to the party. Duty Finder will almost never see this happen. Megiddo Flame is a straight line AoE through random party members. Just move to the side to dodge the AoE or get hit with a Vuln stack. When the boss casts Necropurge, you'll create the same AoEs from the zombies, except this time they'll be underneath random players. Move out of the AoE to dodge the mechanic or be hit with a zombification debuff from earlier. There will be beams of light that are shooting up from the ground around the arena. If you step into these, the color will change from reddish pink to black and the beam will disappear. While you're standing in this circle, you'll get a small bleeding debuff. When Punishing Ray is cast by the boss, it will send out a room-wide AoE, and any beams that are not being stood in will increase the damage done by this room-wide. Brand of the Fallen will give these red arrows above one party in the Alliance. This is a don't be alone marker, so make sure you stack with at least one other member of your party with this symbol. If you don't do this, you'll be turned into a toad for several seconds. Evil Mist is a room-wide AoE that will spawn these poisonous clouds around the arena. These will expand into the circular AoEs from the zombies in the opening mechanic. Just stay away from these clouds and you'll be okay. Once you get the boss below 50% health, it will become untargetable and it's add face time. Three ads will be spawned into the fight. A 
Succubus, a Hagenti, and a Dahark. The three tanks in the Alliance will need to grab one each. All of the ads will throw our Conal AoE, so just try and avoid them as best you can. The Succubus will eventually cast a Beguiling Mist. This will cast the debuff of Seduce to everyone in the Alliance, which could potentially kill you if the cast isn't interrupted or stunned. So I would highly recommend focusing down the Succubus first. Next up, focus down the Hagenti. It can cast Mortal Ray, which is a staring contest, and a Conal AoE in the direction it's facing. If it's looking at you and you don't turn your character away, you'll be hit with an Assunerable Doom debuff. If this debuff reaches the count of zero, you will instantly die, so healers be ready to dispel the debuff. The Hagenti will also target one random player with this red marker and the cast Void Blood, which will hit the targeted player with a small AoE and give anyone in that AoE an Assunerable Poison debuff. And finally, the Dahark. Its massive Conal AoE behind it called Tail Dive will give you a concussion debuff if you get hit by it. When all three ads have been defeated, the boss will perform the move Mana Explosion, which is a big unavoidable room-wide AoE, and return to the arena. The boss will summon three Necropurge circles below random players. This is where it's going to get weird. Step into one circle. Don't step into an overlap circle, just one will be enough. The boss will then cast the move Mega Death. I would play one of their songs here, but I don't want to get copyrighted back to the Stone Age. The reason why we do this is because you need to have some sort of zombification debuff on you to avoid instantly dying to Mega Death, a somehow better, harder, more fancier death than usual. Again, if you stand in two circles instead of one, you will lose control of your character for several seconds with the zombification debuff, but you will still survive Mega Death. The boss will cast Dark Eruption. Three players will get this red icon above their head. They will have a tracking AoE that will follow them for three hits. Just move continuously around the outside of the arena to avoid being hit. If you do get hit by it, it will give you a Von stack for each hit. The boss will cast Evil Mist again and spawn several poisonous clouds around the arena. These will expand into the Necropurge AoEs. The boss will once again cast Mega Death, so we need to stand next to or underneath one cloud to become partially zombified and avoid the Mega Death, giving us the Mega Death. The boss will also cast Hellwind. This will drop every single player's health to single digits. Healers be ready to heal up a storm. From here, the boss will repeat mechanics until it's been defeated. Head up the ramp to be taken to the next area. You'll come to this triple circular arena. It's best to separate into your alliance groups with A going to the left and C going to the right. The Tank Buster is a straight line AoE, so don't stand with the tank. Trembling Epigraph is a room wide AoE. As you damage the stone, a Void Fire will spawn on the far left and far right of the area. Each alliance will need to burn down the ad before it finishes casting Big Burst. If this cast finishes, it will explode in a very hard hitting AoE. Another ad will spawn in that will put up a shield to separate the alliances. Defeat that ad to drop the wall. After a short time, the stone will start casting Flaring Epigraph. On the very far left, very far right, and the entrance of the arena will be three small circular platforms. These will all need to be walked over to raise the shield for the larger circle in the middle section. If you are on the outside of the circle, the shield does not get put up when the boss finishes casting, you will instantly die. The stone won't do much else. Head into the next area. Make your way up the ramp to launch yourself into the next arena where you will come to the penultimate boss, Ozma. Take care when maneuvering around because you can fall off this platform quite easily. Separate into your alliance groups. Alliance A on the left, Alliance C on the right, and Alliance B staying on the rectangular platform as you land in the arena. While in spherical form, Ozma will target one random person in each alliance. They will get this red arrow over their head with a large purple circle around them. After a short time, there will be a proximity marker placed at the feet of where this person is standing. There are two places that you can place this marker. One is at the very back of the rectangular platform of your alliance. The other is, while looking at Ozma, going to the left to place it in the middle of the curve between the alliances. Take care not to overlap the purple AoEs too much in case you or someone else goes in the wrong direction. When these proximity markers are placed, just move away from them as much as you can to reduce the damage to you. Ads will slam down into the arena onto the markers, which will need to be provoked by the tanks. If the AoEs are overlapped too much, then the fragments will explode and give everyone in the rate of damage down. The ad will cast Tornado, which is a small AoE. You'll probably never see it as you burn them down pretty quickly. Ozma can also change form. If it changes form into a triangular pyramid, get off the rectangular platform as it will do a straight line AoE right through the center of the platforms of each alliance. If you get hit with this, it will give you the unassumable debuff Minimize, which decreases your damage dealt and increases your damage taken, as well as the debuffs of Poison and Slow, which are assumable. After this, Ozma will normally attack the party member that is furthest away with a small AoE that gives an assumable bleeding stack. So make sure that you spread out and healers get ready to use Asuna and extra heals. If Ozma changes form into a cube, you will have to move close to Ozma as it will create a massive donut AoE that will hit the entire outside platforms. If you get hit with this, it will give you a Vol stack. Right after this goes off, the tank will need to stand to the side away from everyone else in the party as the boss will do cleaving straight line auto attacks to each tank. There will also be orbs that will spawn in and begin moving around the ringed platform. The tank is normally the one to take these, but anyone can take one and it won't kill you outright unless you have a few Vol stacks. As a healer, you can take one, heal yourself up, and then take the next one. If you leave the orbs alone, they will explode and give everyone in the raid a Vol stack. Ozma will cast Black Hole. It will suck in every player in the Alliance into groups similar to the Atmos fight in Labyrinth of the Ancients. At least one person has to stand on the small circular pad in front of the party when you zone in so the other Alliance can fight their ad. More ads will spawn in. Tanks should pick up these ads and face them away from the party as they can perform cleaving tank busters. They don't have much health, so they can be burned down easily. No mechanics of any significance will happen during this fight. Once your ad has been defeated, keep at least one person standing on the pad until the other alliance has defeated their ad. Walk over the platform where your alliance's ad was defeated to launch yourself to the area below where you will fight Ozma Shade. The Shade will cast Assimilation, which is a staring contest. Just look away from the Shade to dodge the mechanic. If you get hit by this move, just turn your character away and don't attack. You will cleanse yourself of the debuff. If you don't look away, then you could be trapped in a boulder jail and other players will need to break you free. You might not get to experience this as Duty Finder normally doesn't take long to defeat the Ozma Shade. When it has been defeated, 
run into the middle of the now-defeated Ozma Shade, and you'll be transported back to Ozma. The Ozma Shade does have an enraged timer, but again, Judy Finder will never see it today unless everyone fails spectacularly. Ozma will continue changing forms with a few new mechanics thrown in. While in Sphere form, there is a stack marker which will give a magical Volna. Group up to share the damage. While in Cube form, Ozma will quickly cast Holy, which is a small knockback. And while in Pyramid form, Ozma will give some players the debuff Acceleration Bomb. When you get the dice symbol above your head, it will start counting backwards from three. This is where you must stop doing everything, including moving, until the Acceleration Bomb dissipates. If you are moving, performing an action, or even auto-attacking, you will explode, and it can have the capacity to deal enough damage to one-shot you, especially if you have Voln stacks. Ozma will repeat mechanics until it has been defeated. Walk into the middle of the arena when you defeat Ozma to be transported to the ramp, which will take you to the final boss, Califisteri. It's best to tank this boss in the middle of the room as best you can. The tank buster in the auto attacks cleave, so really don't stand with the tank. One of her hair tentacles will change into a giant scythe. The safe side of her upcoming mechanic will be on the side of her hair that hasn't changed. The boss will quickly cast Hair Cut. This will cleave the half of the room on the side that the scythe is on. If you get hit with this, this is a big hit and a nasty bit of sooner it will flesh wound. Tick. The boss will cast Extension. AoEs will appear on the ground and have seeds planted at their location. The first ones are signified by this purple ring on the ground. If you step into this purple ring, everyone around the AoE will be captured in a cage of hair and given the debuff Fetters, which means you are unable to move or use actions. Other players are able to target the cage of hair called Entanglement, and they will need to destroy this to free everyone before the move Garat finishes casting and causes everyone's health to be shaved down to zero. When the boss becomes untargetable and moves into the middle of the room, she will gain a bubble around herself and spawn in several green spheres, some small and some large, called Bijou and Grand Bijou. Destroy all of the Bijou before they finish casting Recharge. The smaller Bijou will cast Recharge faster than the Grand Bijou, but you shouldn't have any trouble bursting everything down. If any of the Bijou finish casting Recharge, it will cause Califisteri's ultimate to be powered up. While this is happening, a few random players will get this pulsating arrow at their feet. This is a multi-hit tracking AoE. You will need to move away from everyone else and run around the arena while avoiding any other player that also has a tracking AoE marker on them. These beams will give you a Vol stack for each one you get hit by and can potentially laser beam you into dust if you get hit with enough of them. Once all the Bijous have been defeated or when they finish casting, there will be unavoidable room wide AoE is called Dancing Mad, which is a 5 hit room wide AoE. From here, the boss will begin to repeat mechanics. The casting move extension will now also spawn three different flowers. Bulbs, axes, or sights. The bulbs will hit the ground on a large AoE that will fling you into the air and give you a Voln stack, so you need to get away from these. The axes will perform a medium sized donut AoE, so when these spawn in, you will need to get near one to avoid being hit. And the sights will fire straight line AoEs through the center of the arena. For everyone you get hit by, it will give you a Voln stack. At times when she casts extension, she can follow it up by moving into the middle of the room and casting penetration. This is an untelegraphed staring contest. If you are looking at the boss, she will pull you in towards her, and if you are looking away, she will push you away. Normally, you will want to be looking away and attempting to aim yourself to a part of the arena in between where two seeds were planted, so she can push you away into this gap and avoid all of the AoEs. If you are pulled in, you will be hit by all of the bulbs that will smash on the ground in the middle, and it will give you three Voln stacks. The boss will change her hair into a scythe and cast Depth Charge. She will gap close to the wall where she is looking, and then cast her Half Room Haircut Cleave. Just make sure you're on the non-scythe side for when she casts this. From here, the boss will repeat mechanics until she has been defeated. Congratulations, you have completed the Weeping City of Mark. My name is The Scrub. Thank you for watching.